join us this week as we do a catch and cook comparison between hogfish and lionfish with a special surprise dinner guest. Hey guys, we just pulled up to one of my very favorite places in all of the Bahamas. We're about to go on a spear fishing mission. We are out of fish, so it's time to go refuel, get some fish, and go see all the seas. So here you go. Come on with us. Cole's making sure we have enough fuel. We'll be running a couple miles. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this goes today. This is my first time using it. Thanks so Flow Spear Fishing for the belt reel. Hopefully I can land some fish with it. We'll see. Once we get to the spot, we go ahead and gear up. Put on our fins, mask, weight belt, gloves, make sure our injector rods are tight, and put the slip tip on. Then we slip into the water. Then we hook up our belt reels, take a look around, and take turns diving one up, one down. Cole and I were taking turns scouting on a reef when all of a sudden I saw a nice hogfish against the coral. So I got my breath and took a dive down towards the fish. As I dive down, I keep my head tucked and load my pole spear up on my way down to the bottom. Once I get down to the bottom, I line up on the fish and make a couple kicks towards it. This hogfish wasn't letting me close the gap. So after doing a couple kicks, I stopped kicking. And that was enough to get the hogfish to be curious, stop its movement, and give me a nice broadside shot. Unfortunately, I didn't stone the fish, which is the shot I was going for, but I did make a nice holding shot and was able to get it to the surface and secure the fish. Nice one. Important not to poke a hole in the tube. <laughs> my first fish on my belt reel. We think it's really important to humanely dispatch your fish as quickly as possible. So what you do is take your dive knife, slip it into the skull, and push down until you feel the fish shake. That's how you know you hit it in the right spot. Pretty stoked to be back here in Long Island. This guy was against the reef. Didn't make it super easy, it was kind of swimming away from me. I chased him a little bit, but closed the gap and got him. <laughs> we understand that we're taking a life every time we go spear fishing, so we like to take a moment to give thanks to the ocean for providing. There's absolutely nothing better than sharing life on the ocean with our two fur babies. When we get back to the boat, we go ahead and jump in to rinse off real quick and then get to the filleting process. I'll just be here a photo of Bobby. Okay. Got this nice, healthy Long Island male hoggy, and I'm gonna flay him up. This is gonna be our Christmas Eve dinner, maybe even Christmas, we'll see. Now that our fish is filleted, average job filleting. We're gonna go ahead and throw the carcasses in a bait crate. Ah, 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 no sir. And what the bait crate's for is it has holes in it and it's just this big PVC container with a bunch of big holes in it and we put the carcasses in there and then we throw it overboard, tie it to the boat and just hang it, suspend it in the water. And what that does is it puts the scent of the dead fish into the water, brings the sharks around, but we're not actively feeding them. So the goal is not to get the sharks to associate us with food, but just for them to get the scent, get curious, come around the boat, and then we can hopefully have a really cool interaction with them. Oh, I'm getting chowed. Are you? Yeah. The next day, Cole and I went out on another spear fishing mission. First, we tried some deeper reef, and then we moved into the shallows. We were in only about 10 feet of water when this reef shark swam up to us, and we noticed that it didn't have a dorsal fin. It looked like maybe the shark was born without its top fin. 
really cool experience and something really unique to see. Then we came across a nice Nassau grouper. Just because you can shoot a fish doesn't mean you should. These fish are critically endangered in a lot of places and the season's closed in the Bahamas right now. After that, we decided to get back out to the deeper reef and Cole had a blackjack swim up on him. He's never eaten one before and wanted to try it out, so he went ahead and got a good holding shot. When he got it to the surface, a curious reef shark was already on the scent and started swimming around. But this is the typical reef shark experience that we have in the Bahamas. They swim around, check you out, and then leave. The rest of the school of the blackjack also decided to hang around a bit. This one really wanted to come home for dinner, but we already had one in the boat, so I let him swim. As we drifted along the reef, we saw a massive lionfish. So I went ahead, dove down, lined up, and took a shot on him. Lionfish are pretty easy to spear. They don't typically swim away, but every now and then they can be little ninjas. Luckily, this guy didn't make a move. Once you get them to the surface, you have to be really careful. Lionfish have 18 venomous spines, and they hurt really badly if they get stuck in you. This guy made one more pass at Cole, and then we were able to get him in the dinghy very carefully. Cole was really careful to remove the slip tip off of the pole spear, get the lionfish in the bucket, and then pull the slip tip through to ensure that he didn't get poked. Next up was Cole's turn. We found another lionfish, so Cole dove down, loaded up, and went ahead and got a really good shot on another massive lionfish. With two big lionfish and a blackjack in the bucket, we decided to call it a day. We jumped in the dinghy and headed back home. Lionfish have 18 venomous spines, which is why so many people are afraid to handle them. But they have 13 venomous spines on the dorsal, two on the pectoral, and three on the anal fins. That will ruin your day right there. Once you cut these off, the fish is just like any other fish completely safe to handle, and delicious to eat. There's nothing wrong with the meat at all. It's just truly those spines that are venomous. And if you do get poked with them, you're not gonna die unless you're allergic, which then go to the hospital. But if you do get poked with them, then what you wanna do is put whatever you got poked, like your finger or your hand, put that in really hot water, as hot as you can stand, and that's gonna help dissipate the pain. So now we're just gonna flay this just like you would kind of any other fish. Gonna do one cut here. I like to outline the fish. So it's kind of my way of filleting to each their own. Alright, there's our lionfish. And if we really want to get into it, we could use a spoon and get the rest of this meat. What I like to do is kind of shave some off for the pups. That's my excuse for not being great at filleting. You gotta feed the dogs. Finn Finn, you want some fish? We decided on comparing lionfish and hogfish. We're gonna have lionfish and a piece of hogfish. Save some for Christmas. Take this little top loin off, save that. And uh, the scraps generally always go to the dogs. Pin sit. Gentle. These are sous chef. <laughs> All right, that's our newly renovated fridge. That's probably the first time it's been on camera. Shout out to my dad for helping out, making the new floor for that. I think we're just gonna do a little pan fry so that we can compare them very easily. Just a little bit of butter, just a little bit of seasoning so we can really taste which fish is uh, better. We'll see. We have our fish. We're gonna make a coleslaw, Cole's coleslaw. I stole the recipe from Steph. We're gonna do that in some yellow rice. Get it to a boil, add yellow rice. Pretty self-explanatory. And we're gonna get the coleslaw started. Steph did a great job chopping. I put all this in there. 
Cole loves his sauces. I do love my sauces. The base is gonna be a little bit of mayonnaise. I love my mustards as well. So we're gonna do spicy brown mustard and then there's also some honey mustard. There we go. And we're gonna add some pepper. Smoke paprika. And red wine vinegar always goes nice on the little veggies. This will dilute it a little bit. A little lemon juice. And we're gonna whip it on up. Yeah, I like it. A little kick to it with the paprika. And we're just saying put it on in. A little bit in there. Get all that sauce. And then this was very, very easy. Just cabbage and shaved carrots we use with the peeler. Can't always find lettuce here in the Bahamas, so we make do with what we got. <laughs> Gotta get our greens. The water is to a boil, so we're gonna add our yellow rice. Since it's just Steph and I, we're making smaller portions, which is quite nice. Real quick, before we start the fish, I just want to give you a peek at the sunset. Check out how beautiful that is. Another stunning night here in the Bahamas. Let me show you one of my secrets. This is the completa seasoning. It's great, easy, you don't have to overthink things. A little complete seasoning, a little pepper, butter. I'm just saying do a little bit. Try to be healthy. We're on a health kick. <laughs> just wait till I make dessert tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Pan's hot. Put the butter on. I'm gonna go hogfish. Seasoning down. Hogfish. Seasoning down. And here's the lionfish. This one we actually kept the skin on. It's the scales are so tiny, it's quite easy to scale and it doesn't fling everywhere. I wish the camera could smell. <laughs> <laughs> Smells great. Secret with fish is not to overcook it. Check it. Let's see how we're doing on the lionfish. Yeah, that looks good. They are a little bit different size, so the hogfish is going to take a little longer. So we're gonna pull the lionfish off a little bit early. Let's see, hogfish. Not bad, not bad. So it looks like the lionfish is done. You know, the easy way of telling it or how we generally figure out a fish is done is like the fork test. So if it's coming apart easily like that, kind of flaky, it's done. Looks like the fish is done. Gave it a few extra minutes. It's very similar. Cooked the same, cooked about the same. And uh, a little citrus to go on top. Almost done here. Looks like it just needs to, uh, needs a few more minutes and we'll meet you at the dinner table. Right. Oh, Finny, come here. <laughs> Finn knows it's dinner time too. So. <laughs> Just dogs being dogs. It's the witching hour. Yeah. Steph calls it. Yes. Thanks for cooking. This looks amazing. So we're gonna serve it up and tell you which one we like better, the lionfish or the hogfish. So um, yeah. Lemon sure. on yours. Wait, let me taste this one first. Mmm. That is delicious. So lionfish are a little bit of a pain in the butt to fillet because you have to chop off the spines, but totally worth it. It's really good. Alright, I'll give the hogfish a try. The hogfish is thicker. Yeah, it's a little bit firmer. firmer. Yeah. But I think the lionfish is a little bit more tender and I would choose the lionfish over the hogfish, <laughs> honestly. Truthfully, yes, I, I think I would say the same. Thanks for joining us. Hope yep. you enjoyed it. We got some lionfish, hogfish. We're gonna go chow and have a great dinner. Thanks, Cole, for cooking. Thanks for spearing. <laughs> you caught it. And we'll see you next week. All and right, bye from you. Finn and Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Right when we finished up dinner, we went out back and I noticed that there was a massive tiger shark circling around the bait crate. 
She hung out with us for a good hour and we had an awesome experience. Thanks so much for joining. Please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again next week.